workplaces in South Korea are known for being friendly towards women. While on the surface some progress has been made with regards to maternity leave, companies still find ways to bend the rules and keep women down. Workplace comedy cold-blooded in turn, starring R.A. Miranda Good Bad Mother and Am Ji Wan Little Women, explores the stubborn hold the patriarchy still wields over contemporary office culture while showing how it can force women to turn against each other. Do you have questions about the biggest topics and trends from around the world? Get the answers with SCMP Knowledge. Our new platform of curated content with explainers, FAQs, analyses and infographics brought to you by our award-winning team. RA Place, Go Hey RA, a mother and wife who has been out of the workforce for seven years, but suddenly decides she wants her own life again now that her daughter is older. She shows grit and determination in her search for employment, but, despite her sterling qualifications, keeps hitting the same brick wall in job interviews, they all think she's too old and out of practice. Hey Are is a strong woman who doesn't back away from a challenge, but, although she puts on a brave face for her family, she begins to recognize that her prospects are bleak until she interviews at the market house firm. Where one of her interview panelists is her former colleague Choi Ji-Wan, Am Ji-Wan. Ji-Wan is the director of the product planning team, a position in which she excels. She is recognized for her abilities, but is still under the thumb of her male superiors. Including Ju Gwangsu Kim Wan Hei, who absent-mindedly barks orders at her while he watches sports games on his phone. When Market House's more successful competitor comes under fire for forcing its female employees to sign no-pregnancy contracts, G1 superiors see this as an opportunity for their company to pull ahead. During Hayere's interview, G1 asked the interviewees what they would do if asked by a boss to do something illegal. Another job hunter answers that she would report them, but not Hey Array. She is clear that she will do anything for her superiors. Hey Array fails to land the entry level position she is applying for thanks to discrimination on the part of G1's colleagues. So G1 offers her an internship. A proud Hey Array initially refuses, but when it becomes clear she has no other viable path back to the workplace, she takes the gig. Though more competent and experienced than most of her new superiors, Hayare accepts her role on the bottom rung of the career ladder. She even has to browbeat her boss So JCO Kim In Kwan, who used to work under her, to treat her like a subordinate. Hayare quickly identifies her two new colleagues GM So Jin Kim Haiwa and Lee Munyung Lee Chaiyun as potential allies. Since Sojin's child is about to start primary school and Moon is in the third trimester of pregnancy, Heyore views them as vulnerable and easy prey. Little does she know how right she is. Jiwan pulls Heyore aside and reveals the real reason she hired her. Jiwan can give her a managerial position. But only if she convinces Sojin and Moon to resign or, failing that, creates a situation that gets them fired. Why? Because they've applied for maternity leave and G1 wants them out to sneakily cut costs and gain an advantage on their competitor. As a mother herself, this throws Heyare into a moral pickle. The irony of the situation is that she worked with G1 before their roles were reversed. Heyare was a workaholic who rose up to a management position through her ability, but also thanks to her willingness to trample on others and ignore the needs of her family. In flashback, JC Op interrupts an important meeting to inform her that her daughter has been taken to hospital, but she opts to continue the meeting. On another occasion, she sides with a male boss who reprimands a colleague for being late owing to her child just after G1 who appears far less cold and calculating in the past, attempted to console the woman. Heyore and Jiwan are both strong characters whose lives 
have taken different paths and we can expect some fireworks between them now their paths have crossed again. The contrast and tension between these formidable women is cold-blooded Intern's chief draw, but the show around them has its ups and downs. Supporting characters aren't very memorable and the workplace jokes land about as often as they don't. Cold-blooded Intern is driven by a compelling moral conundrum, but will it be enough to sustain the series?